Hi everyone, my name is Angela from Angela Stitches and welcome to my stitching vlog. So I had a really busy weekend so I barely had any time to stitch but I did stitch a little bit in this corner. Let me zoom in a little bit. So this is this year's tree by this magazine called Needlework and Tre Treasures and Needlework. Uh, so I have to wake up early tomorrow so I'm gonna I don't think I'm going to stitch that much tonight, but I kind of want to park some threads on my project, so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to park on this one a little bit in this corner, and I'm also going to park on two other projects if I can. So Dormouse, this is a project by Brooks Books. So I think I'm going to park on mostly on the tile or the checkerboard on the bottom. And... Maybe a little bit around like the grass area. And anywhere that I don't really have to count, I'm going to try to park some threads. And then the other project that I want to park some threads on is Lavender and Lace Christmas Angel. So I'm going to do that so that tomorrow I can just start stitching right away. Um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'll come back tomorrow and show you what it looks like after... I park all of the threads on my projects, and then, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. So it's Monday, and I parked some threads, and this is this year's tree, and these are the threads for only three different symbols, but I didn't want it to carry too much threads over, so I just parked multiple of the same color, so it looks like it's a lot, but it's only three symbols. And then, so I did this year's tree last night, and then I got too tired, so I went to bed, and today I just did Wonderland, the Dormouse. So I parked along the bottom, the checkerboard, and the grass. Um, anywhere that I don't really have to count, I parked. And then after that, I worked on parking threads on Lavender and Lace Christmas Angel. I think I'm going to do one over one skin at the very end. So... That's everything that I worked on today. So the next few days, I think I'm going to focus on working on all of the park threads. And I'm planning on starting this sometime this week. But I was reading the chart and I realized that it's not just cross stitching. Um, there are some specialty stitches and I feel like I need to read it more carefully. Um, I just schemed it for now, but I might have to take my time on this one. So I'm going to start it, but I just want to, um, I don't know, I guess study it before I start. I don't know. I'll update you on that when I start it, but this is the embellishments and I think these are so pretty. Um, I really can't wait to use it. So anyways, I'm going to just work on this year's tree and Sorry, I'm just looking at the, um, I love the beads. It looks like little pearls almost. But I, I think I'm just going to work on all of the park threads on this year's tree. And I'll talk to you later. It is Tuesday and I just uploaded my Know Your Needle Worker tag. And before I did that, I worked on the park threads on this project. So I finished her neck area and her hair piece. Um, let's do it this way. Let's zoom in. And I also worked on a little bit on her wings. And I have a lot of the white to fill in. And when I get the whisper, I'll do her dress and then do one over one skin at the very end. So that's that. And... I've been working on this year's tree while I was waiting for the tag video to be uploaded and this has been going really slow. I'm not really sure why, but I think it's because this is another color chart, but it's not as colored like the Paula Vaughn charts, but I don't know, it's just really slow. But I really love this design, so I'm just going to keep working on it until I finish all of the park threads and then I'll start Bliss by Just Nia. So not a lot of progress, but... 
hopefully tomorrow I'll make some good progress because I'm free all day tomorrow so I have no plans but to stitch so that's good and I've also had an idea I want to do um, I want to do a 24 hour marathon just stitching well obviously I'm not gonna be stitching the full 24 hours but I am gonna sleep and do other things too but I want to update every hour or two and work on just one project or I don't know I haven't decided yet whether I want to just work on just one project or as many projects that I can um, but it sounds fun um, maybe I'll work on only on my perforated paper projects or a small projects that I could actually finish I don't know let me know what you think about a 24-hour marathon um, I don't know if this is even a thing in the cross stitching world but this summer I posted on Instagram every hour when I was working on a diamond painting until 4 in the morning and it was really fun so I thought I would do it with cross stitching but well this one well for the cross stitching it won't be real time because I'll be compiling all of the updates into one video so you'll probably see the video a day or two later but I thought I would try it um, it's not something that I would do every week or every month but I just thought it would be fun so let me know what you think and what project you would like to see during the 24-hour marathon anyways um, I'm just gonna work on this year's tree and I'll check back tomorrow with some progress well, today I thought I would answer some more questions. Um, it's Wednesday the 18th by the way and I had some questions sporadically in my videos so I thought I would answer a couple of them and there's only three that are asked quite often and I'm working on Dormouse by Brooks Books and um, I forgot to mention in my tag video, um, the New Year Needleworker tag video so the tag is from Trisha, the left-handed stitchers blog. So I'll put a link in the description box if you want to answer them in your videos as well. Um, I forgot to mention that in that video. So uh, number one is how many whips do you have? Um, I'm not really sure how many, but let's because um, I know that I started 12 or I will be starting 12. I think I started 10 so far and I have two left. So if I include the two that aren't fin or started just yet, I ha I'm going to have 12 new starts just in December. And I know that I also have 15 perforated paper projects by Brooks Books. And then last time I counted, I had 15 projects that are on fabric. And since then, I finished The Adams Family and... I also finished one of the Lavender and Lace Angel projects, so I might have 13 left. So, 13, 15, and then 12 in December. That's 40 projects, 25 projects on fabrics, and 15 perforated paper projects. Um, I should really bring that down because... I'm planning on starting a bunch of new projects on January as well, so that's a lot of whips. So, and then the second question that I have here is how long have you been stitching? So this is a little difficult to answer because um, I might have talked about this in my older videos, but um, I don't really remember when I started stitching. I don't even remember who introduced me to cross stitching. I mean, I might have been really, really young because um, as long as I could remember, cross-stitching was always one of my hobbies. And I even asked my parents, and they also don't know. Um, they also say, you've been always been cross-stitching. <laughs> like, no one knows how I got into cross-stitching, but I do have a unfinished project that might be the oldest thing that I have. Um, I think, I might be wrong, but I think my dad... Because my dad used to travel for work a lot, and I think he brought this back one day, and, or, I don't know, this might have been something that I got when I was really young. I mean, no one knows. Uh, so, but I know I had a project that I was working on when I was 12 or 13, 
that I gave it to a friend and I barely had any stitches in it. I remember this because it was graduation day and I had to clear out my locker and this is in Korea by the way and I spent what could be too much money for a 12 year old to spend on just one thing or to splurge on um i think i knew how much it was a couple of years ago but i can't remember right now but i think it was fifty thousand won, which is like 45 dollars or a little less than 50 dollars us dollars so i kept it in my locker because i thought i would get in trouble for spending that much money I mean, it was my money. I didn't steal it or anything. It's just the fact that I, like, splurged it on something like that at one blow was the issue. So I thought I would get in trouble if my parents found out. So I kept it in my locker, and it was graduation day, and I couldn't take it home. So I gave it to a friend, like, the Ada fabric and the DMC and the DMC box and the bobbins and everything, the chart. And I don't even remember where I got the chart and the DMCs for that project. Um, I also don't remember what design it was. Um, I remember nothing about the project. But I remember who I gave it to. But right now, I'm not really sure if I'm remembering the right girl. Um, I could ask her, but I'm not really that close to her. To just call her and ask something that happened 20 years ago. Um, wow, I can't believe it's already been 20 years. So crazy. So, I don't know how long. Um, let's just say over 20 years. <laughs> That's another question. Um, seems like a lot of people are curious about my age. And I just gave it away, but I'm 32 in Korean age. I'll be turning 33 in January. Um, I say Korean age because people in Korea count age different. Um, I get confused every time. So, in Korea, when you're born you're already considered one year old. So on what's supposed to be your first birthday, you're turning two is how I understood it. Um, I'll look it up and put it here if I could find a better explanation. But um, so I'm always confused when people ask me how old I am. So I answer I was born in 1988 and let them do the math. So the other day I was with some people and one of the girls there called me Onni, which is what you would call a older girl. So if you're um so if there's a person that's older than you, you would call her Onni, and if it's a boy, you would call them Oppa. So there's different um terms for each situation. So there's also Hyung and Nuna, which is Hyung is something you would call an older brother or older boy if you're a boy. So if I would call an older boy, I wouldn't call them Hyung because I'm a girl, I would call him Oppa. And Nuna is the opposite. Someone, a younger boy would call me Nuna. Um, so anyways, I hope that made sense. It's really confusing, but there's a little Korean culture there. So... I was with some people and someone called me Anni and then people around us was really curious about my age. So I told them I was born in 1988 and then they told me I was 32. So I guess I'm 32 in Korea. And in my last video, this isn't a question to answer or anything, but I just wanted to add... Um, so in my last video, I said that it's taboo to talk about mental health in Korea. I say this because I've heard... Well, first of all, growing up here, because I went to school here starting from 3rd or 4th grade until I finished middle school, and I started a year in high school, and during that time, I've never heard of mental health before. I've only heard it when I went back to the States, and I was like, what? what is that? And it was such a weird foreign concept to me, and like talks about depression and anxiety and things like that. I didn't really know what that was or even if it was real, um, it was really shocking to me that you could get sick in the mind and that it can be treated. Like you could go to a hospital and get treatment for your mind. And when I moved back to Korea a couple of years ago, I've heard stories where, and sometimes it's just rumors, but I feel like rumors always have some truth to it. But I've heard some stories where people would, will not get hired or even get fired if you even had a meeting with a psychologist or any type of mental health facility. 
um, like even if you weren't diagnosed with anything, um, you wouldn't get hired or get fired. Isn't that crazy? Um, I personally never met with a therapist or anybody because I never felt like I needed it. But I mean, I would really consider not going um, even if I needed it just in case. And I feel like that's super sad, right? Being sick, whether physically or mentally, it's, it's really no one's fault. You just get sick sometimes and you should be able to get treatment for it. And that's why when I was reading and listening to a couple of the um, PTSS songs, I thought it was really brave of them to do that, to talk about it, because they don't have to do that. And I feel like that's why they weren't popular in Korea for a long time, because they don't really sing about girls or being lovesick or things like that, but they talk about social issues and mental health. And one of my favorite songs of theirs is Pepsi or Silver Spoon in English translation or Crotit. Crotit is a type of bird, so that's what Pepsi is. And I like that song because at first it sounds like they're cussing, but well, I guess they are, but basically they're talking about social issues in Korea, the conflict between the younger generations and the older generations. And there's also an explanation video, so if you're curious about it, just look up BTS Silver Spoon Explain video, and someone made a really good video about it. And if you want to learn more about Korean culture, I feel like BTS songs are really good for that. And I even learn a lot of things um, through their music, like Pepsi or um, Silver Spoon. The concept of Silver Spoon in Korea, I didn't know anything about that, but I knew I learned about it through their songs. And like Korean idioms that I never even heard of, um, I learned through their songs. So that's really good. If you want to learn more about co Korean culture, I think BTS songs are really a good start. So yeah, that's all of the things that I wanted to talk about. Um, so I'm gonna continue work on Dormouse and then maybe I'll work on a little bit more on this year's tree. So I'll come back with an update a little bit later. So see you soon. So it's been a couple of hours and I finished all of the park threads on this year's tree and I think it looks really good. You could kind of tell, let's see, now you could kind of tell they're trees now and I really like that. So um, I'm going to put this away. I'm going to move on to my next new project, which is Bliss by Just Nian. And I'm actually super excited to start this because this was one of my most anticipated pieces to start. So I'll set this up and I'll come back in a little bit. So, um, okay, I thought, I knew this was a project that could be a little bit challenging for me. Um, so it's been an hour since my last clip because I was trying to, well, first this is the fabric size and this is pretty small and I'm using this fabric called, um, um, Carnival by Picture This Plus, and it's only going to be like five and a half inches wide, so this big, and eleven and a quarter inch high, or tall, so it's not going to be that big, it's pretty small, and so it's small, and I'm going to go by band, so I'm going to work on the first band, and this white lacy bit calls for, well, I'm going to be stitching this with DMC, and the first band, right off the bat, calls for number 8 cotton pearl, and I don't have that. So I'm gonna start with the roses in the middle, which are really beautiful. And this is the list of embellishments. So this, that came with it. So, like I said, I'm going to start with the roses, and I have three of the colors here. These pretty dusty rose pinks, and... So these, and I mean, this is gorgeous, but the more I look at it, I feel like this might be one of the most challenging projects so far. They are a lot of specialty stitches that I've never even heard of, and I don't know, a little nervous about... No, I don't, uh, it's okay. I think it's only fabric and threads, nothing to be scared about. Um, I think I'm just gonna take my time and take it slow and get to the specialty later. 
I don't know why I'm so intimidated by some of some stitches here. Um, I'm only gonna do the cross stitches for now, so I'll try to come back in like an hour and show you my progress. Um, so I'll see you in a little bit. It's been an hour and this is how much I got done. So this is three different colors of DMC and this is so much fun to stitch. If there weren't any specialty stitches, I think I'll be flying through this. And the picture isn't very accurate um, color-wise, it's much brighter in real life. So yeah, that's one of the things that I noticed so far. So I'm going to try to work on some specialty stitches on a scrap piece of fabric before I start them on the actual project. So like a practice piece. So if you want to see that, let me know and I'll show you that in my next stitching vlog. And then I'm also going to try to work on Wonderland because I have a goal to finish this by end of this year. And I'm going to put this one away and start Mrs. C. Um, this is a free chart. I'll put a link in the description box. This one is almost at the very end of the list in the website, I think. I might be wrong, but she also has so many free designs to download and this is one of them. So I'll be starting this sometime this weekend, probably. So I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about, but I kind of want to show you the newer, the new Mirabilia design that they came out with. And I feel like so Nora Corbett, she's still the designer, right? Um, I feel like she's really into like the light turquoise, um, greenish, bluish colors because I've noticed the designs that came out in the past year or so always had some of the same color tones, which I'm not really mad about. I really love it. Like the mermaid, the new mermaid that came out the other day is so cool. Like the other designs were... Um, I would say like gorgeous in an obvious way but the mermaid that came out the other day it kind of reminds me of the mermaid people in Harry Potter um I think the fourth one the goblet of fire I don't know what they're called mer people I think but like a beautiful version of it I think the color scheme is what makes me think about the mer people from Harry Potter but I'm definitely gonna get the chart and I might change some of the beads because it's too much of the same color tone, even the fabric that they use. And I know that they try to make it um, as simple as they can so that people could actually see the design. Um, I might be totally wrong, but that's my thought process when I see their fabric choices. Um, but anyways, I think I'm going to get the chart. And if I ever stitch it, I think I'm going to get like a really dark fabric and have the mermaid pop. But then I'm going to change some of the bead colors. Um, so right now I'm thinking I want to change the beads into like oranges. Like a burnt orange color beads. Um, I don't know, but some opposite colors to green. Um, I think that would look really nice. But yeah, I love the newer styles that they're coming out with recently. So yeah, I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about. I feel like this might be a really long video. Um, I forgot that I had a Q&A in the middle of this video, so um, I hope you still enjoyed it. Um, so thank you so much for watching and commenting, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!